It's certainly a privilege to be on this side of the living. The good God of heaven, he's did it again. He has showered us with his fingertip of love and mercy <clears throat> and allowed us to see another bright and shiny day. And we should be eternally grateful for that. My God has allowed me to be back in the pool pit again to pronounce the gospel of Jesus Christ as I know it. And prayerfully, I'll get through this lesson. <clears throat> so I'm going to jump right in. Now, being this is the first Sunday, uh, you know, we have potluck. And I've been warned once again <clears throat> to uh, not to hold you captive uh, of a long sermon. But please believe I have a lung disease. So I certainly wouldn't be up here for a long time. <clears throat> but I want to thank those who was looking forward to the car wash yesterday. <clears throat> um, the car wash for the benefit of helping Bobby and Freeze again. It was a blessing to, uh, it is a blessing to see how people are just stepping in and ready to, to work and, and contribute to, to fundraising the funds for this surgery that I'm trying to have hopefully soon. Unfortunately, the rain came through and we had to cancel uh, or postpone. You know, nowadays I, I try to look at everything through a, a spiritual lie. See, everything spiritually. And my motto or this slogan that I have on my computer screen says that Jesus saw the good and the bad. He saw the purpose and the pain in God's presence in the problem. No matter how desperate or how willing we were to, to have a car wash and raise money, a lot of times God has better ideas. Our ways are not his ways. And his will will be done. Certainly there will be other days for us to have fundraisers for the benefit. But to give you an update on how I've been, been doing uh, my last trip to New Orleans, I thought the doctors there were going to run some tests on me to see what the uh, prognosis was on my heart because that seemed to be the only issue. There seemed to be some tissue around my heart that's, that seemed to be a little weak and not strong enough. It won't keep me from having a transplant, but they want to get this muscle around my heart better. So I've been taking this medicine the last couple of months. And according to the uh, test that they ran externally <clears throat> on Thursday, everything seemed to be uh, you know, headed that way towards receiving the transplant. Uh, my heart sounds good. There's no problems there, the blood pressure is miraculously, miraculously just where it's supposed to be. Uh, <clears throat> uh, the lab work um, is good. Uh, this one medicine they want to put me on to uh, make my heart better. They want to up the doses to make it work even faster or make it work even better. But absolutely not to cause any harm or danger anywhere else. So I go back to the doctor on the 21st of June and I have an appointment then and that will be the appointment to uh, 
uh, put me on the list. Certainly, I'm hoping and praying that that is the case, but everything seems to be going that way. I truly believe that God is going to keep me around for a while, and I believe that. If you're here at the Church of Christ, we want you to know that here at the Church of Christ, we believe the Bible is right. We teach it, we preach it, and we believe it. We believe the, the Bible is our roadmap to heaven. The Bible is our moral compass. The Bible is the word of God, and we believe that. If you have any questions about what we do, or say why you are here at the Church of Christ, feel free to ask me or any other member, and we'll be sure to give you a Bible question, a Bible answer. But if we don't have the answer for you, then we know what all the answers are. And that is in the written word of God. Surely by this time or by now, you have heard me mention from time to time that the book of Joshua is my favorite book in the Bible. And I believe the reason behind this is that when I first was introduced to the book of Joshua, when I was first taught the book of Joshua, I was somewhere in my middle 20s. And as I understand it, Joshua, the trained leader of Israel, was around the same age. So the instruction that God gave Joshua over and over and over again, these instructions, they stuck with me. God told Joshua to be strong and courageous, to be strong and courageous, because at this time of my life, surely I was strong and courageous but for all the wrong reasons. God told Joshua, be strong and courageous in the Lord. Meditate in the word day and night. These instructions, Joshua, don't waver to the left or to the right. Joshua, Brother Bell, and everybody else who believe in the word of God, if you trust these instructions, you make your way prosperous and successful. Surely there will be some dark days. Uh, there will be some obstacles in your way. But still stay strong and courageous, Joshua. And just as I was a witness, uh, just as I was there with Moses, Joshua, I am there with you. I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. And I want you to notice and it's a good thing that there's a common theme in the Bible before and after Joshua. Like Psalms 1, 1 through 3. The Bible says, Blessed is the man that walketh in the counsel of the ungodly. His delight is in the law of the Lord day and night. Whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Psalm 119, 1 and 2. Blessed are those who walk in the law. Romans 2, 13, the doers, be doers of the word, the doers of the words shall be justified. In James 1, 22, 1, 22, be ye doers of the word, not just hearers only. Now the scripture we read come from Joshua chapter 6, verses 11 through 15. Now the heading of my Bible says the walls of Jericho falls. Or it may say the walls of Jericho have fallen. And the subject this morning is when your back is up against the wall. Because I believe we all have to face some awful circumstances from time to time. Some terrible dilemmas, some unanswered questions to, to the point where we start questioning our spiritual path. When our back is against the wall. We may even think to ourselves that being worldly rather than spiritually seem better and have fewer problems. Or Brother Bell, what do you mean, preacher? What I mean is that we expect our spiritual advancement, our spiritual development to carry us through any problems with ease. But whatever the form of fashion, the discomfort is, 
The result is always the same. We get frustrated. We look at scripture like Matthew eleven twenty eight, where the Bible says, I will give you rest. We look at scripture like Philippians 4, 7, where the Bible says, the peace of God to guard your heart. Or John 10, 10, when the Bible says, Jesus said, I come to give you life and life more abundantly. But our path, whether it's worldly or spiritually, is not delivering. And we still find ourselves frustrated and we find ourselves still with our back against the wall. <clears throat> when I first started preparing this lesson and this subject, the more and more I looked at it, the scripture, I wanted to change the subject. I wanted to change the subject from when your back is up against a wall to trust in the process. Now, now, if you watch a lot of NBA, like I do, uh, thanks to Brother Andrew Rogers, I was able to watch all the NBA. <coughs> Especially my team. But trust the process is a slogan that the Philadelphia 76ers has been chanting for two seasons. And the process was to tank games, deliberately lose games. Because in the NBA, the team with the worst record has a better chance of receiving the number one draft pick. And the process was a tank. And they did that for maybe three seasons. The league, the commissioner, the fans, everybody disagreed. But the GM of the team kept telling people, trust the process. And eventually the Philadelphia 76ers have two of the top 10 players in the NBA. Now, the 76ers are not doing very well right now, but they're still chanting, trust the process. These two players that they have are under 21. And the future looked very bright for the 76ers. But book after book and time after time, and even today, all we have to do is trust the process. In 2 Chronicles 2, 2015, I had no idea Jerry was going to talk about this last week, but I'm glad he did. And if he wasn't paying attention, I'll say it again. In 2 Chronicles 20, 15, the Bible says, this is what the Lord says. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. The battle is not yours. The battle belongs to the Lord. Whatever the battle is, the battle, if the battle is temptation, if it's debt, adultery, lying, or unfaithfulness, it belongs to the Lord. All you have to do is trust the process. And that's what the people did in 2 Chronicles 20, 15. The Bible says they trust the process. Now Israel found themselves between a rock and a hard place. Over there in Exodus 14, they had Pharaoh and their army behind them and the Red Sea before them. In verse 10 of that chapter, the Bible says Pharaoh drew near Israel. They lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians was marching after them. The Bible says they were so afraid that they cried out. In Exodus 14, 13, the Bible says Moses said to the people, Stand still and watch the salvation of the Lord. Moses could have easily said, y'all stand still, watch the salvation of the Lord, and trust the process. Job is a man we read about, and you may be able to relate to Job in some kind of way with his suffering. I've told Lewis from time to time that when I witnessed his whole body covered with dry skin and as sick as he was, he reminded me of Job. Maybe you lost family like Job. 
Maybe you obtain a sickness like Job. Maybe people in your inner circle has encouraged you to step out of your Christian confinement like Job's friends did. Job's friends was totally convinced that Job had sinned. But Job was 100% sure that he didn't deserve what was happening to him. Job said, since I don't deserve this, I'll wait till my change come. Job said in Job 19, 25, I know my Redeemer lives. And since I know my Redeemer lives, I'll trust the process. But for some reason, sometimes, even though the instruction, the information, the teaching or the coaching comes from the word of God or comes from the man of God, but when it comes from my mouth, Folks have a problem with that. Apostle Paul went through something similar to this. From the book of Galatians, the Bible says he taught there, and the people believed and obeyed there. But after he left there, the false teachers got busy. And when Paul returned there, he noticed the folks gave him a cold shoulder. The attitude of the people seemed to be a little different now. So Paul asked the question, what has happened? Where is the love that was here before? What happened to the blessedness you experienced when you first heard the gospel of Jesus Christ? Galatians 4, 16, Paul said, now that I tell you the truth, I become your enemy. Remember Naaman? Y'all remember Naaman? The captain of the Israel army that had a disease called leprosy. Remember the prophet told Naaman what God said. He gave him instructions from God. He told Naaman to go wash himself in the Jordan River seven times. The Bible says Naaman had problems with these instructions from the man of God. He had issues with these problems that he got from the prophet. Issue number one, Naaman thought it was rude that the prophet didn't come out to meet him face to face. Issue number two, Naaman wanted to take away the power from God to put it in the one of the prophet. Issue number three, Naaman didn't see no different from the Hillsborough River, from the Pearl River, or Big Black Creek. Naaman thought all the water was the same. The Bible says in verse 13 of that same chapter, one of his officers tried to reason with him. And I can see this officer in a slight whisper saying sir sir the man of God gave you instructions all you have to do is trust the process the Bible says in verse 14 he dipped himself seven times And he was clean. From beginning to end of the Bible, the word of God, the examples are there. That all we have to do is trust the process. God will always show up. And when God shows up, we will overcome. We will obtain the victory. And we must give God the honor. Lift up his name. Give him the honor and praise him that he deserves. We can never go wrong if we trust the process of God. All of us have our issues. I certainly have my issues. You may have issues with your job. You may have issues with your health, your children, or your friends. You may even have issues with being a Christian. And certainly the church has 
its issues. But whatever the issue is, the answer is always God. You are not the answer to the issues between you and your spouse. Your school or the teacher are not the, is- not the answer to the issues between you and your children. The elders are not the answer to the issues between the church. The supreme and only answer to all of our issues is God. But you got to trust the process. God wanted Israel and everybody around them to be a witness that their success was not human victory. Their victory was not man against man, but the victory was false gods over the true almighty God. This was the reason why the ark was placed here in the middle of the people in this scripture to remind the Hebrews and the Canaanites watching that God is the center and sustainer of all things. God told Joshua, the kings, the warriors, the land, and everything else belongs to you. All the people had to do was obey. Let God enter the territory and claim the victory. Now the Bible says in 1 John 5, 4, for every child of God defeats this evil world and achieves this through faith. Now the Bible has a lot to say about the world, about this territory that we live in that's influenced by the evil one. The Bible says keep away from the world. Keep away from worldly ambitions, worldly desires, worldly views, worldly attitude. Don't have a worldly frame of mind. First John 5, 4, the Bible say the victory it won, is won by faith. By who? Only those who trust that Jesus is the Son of God. God is here in this territory called the world, on this battlefield called the world, God is here. All we have to do is trust the process. God said in 2 Timothy 2, 2 Timothy 1, 7, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power. Here's a few scriptures to encourage us to trust the process. In Deuteronomy 20, 1 through 4, 2 Chronicles 20 and 15, the battle is not yours, it belongs to the Lord. I, I believe we have those scriptures. You should write them down. I'll wait. <clears throat> But here's the thing that gets in our way. When trusting God's process, God's timing, God's timing is not our timing. Notice in every battle, everything was done according to God's timing. Remember God's instruction was to march around the city six times. Then on the seventh day, march around the city seven times. The battle was not won on the first or third day. 
the battle was won on the seventh day. On the seventh day, God gave precise instructions. After marching around seven times, the priest would sound and blast the ram's horn, and the people were to shout. Surely there were some folks saying to themselves and complaining and saying, this is too much marching. We did this three days ago. That's too much shouting because that's what we do. Surely there were some folks questioning how effective could this really be? And I want you to know that the folks in the world are saying the same thing about y'all church folks. They say y'all praying too much. They say you're worshiping too much. That's too much doctrine. That's too much faith. That's too much work. That's too much truth. That's too much unity. And certainly in the church of Christ, that's too much order. So I want to direct your attention back to Naaman. You remember Naaman. Remember the captain of the Israel army. Surely the power was not in the different times he dipped himself in the Jordan River. Neither was the power in the Jordan River. Because if the power was in the Jordan River, still today the Jordan River would be full of folks trying to get themselves in there who had a disease. If the power was in the Jordan River, they'd be selling tickets to get into the Jordan River. Oh no. It was God that cured Naaman. It was God who brought down the walls of Jericho. Shouting and marching was just the instructions, the evidence of obedience. If there's some walls in your life, whatever the walls in your life is, it may be a wall that's separating you from God. It may be a wall from you receiving life more abundantly and obtaining a simple peace of mind. The power of God plus the obedience to God is still tearing down walls. The song say, oh, what a friend we have in Jesus. And Jesus said from John 15, 14, indeed, you are my friends. If you do what I command. In Matthew 7, 21, 23. Now, this is a, a scripture that Church of Christ folks like to go to. But it's there for everybody to set everybody straight. Because what he's saying here is that you won't be able to fake your way into heaven. You can fool me and you might even be fooling yourselves. But you can't fool God. When you read the book of Joshua, Old Testament scripture, there's a common theme there. Every battle, every wall, or obstacle that stood in their way. And stood in God's people's way, they was never to forget God's honor. Israel knew they would live in the land because the land was promised to them. But to possess the land, they had to cross the Jordan River. In Joshua 3, 12, 13, the Bible said the Lord told Joshua to tell the people, Choose 12 men from each tribe. Put the priests in front of everybody. They will also carry the ark. Now I want you to picture this. Here it is. There's a million plus people behind them. In front of them, there's the priest who's carrying the ark. And I read somewhere, it's also in front of them, there's the Jordan River. Now I read somewhere, That at this time of the year, the Jordan River is at its peak. Now, the priests 
who was carrying the Ark Covenant of God, they didn't know what was about to happen. The only thing they knew is they got the instructions from God, from Joshua, and they was going to trust the process. The Bible says in Joshua 3.13, as soon as their feet touched the water, the whole river still looked like a wall. Won't he do it? I'm trying to get you to understand the mighty power of God. If God can make water stand at attention, we don't have to worry about who holds the presidential seat. If God can make water stand still. You can trust God. You don't have to worry about wiping away all your tears. If God can make water stand at attention, you should trust him when he says, I will give you peace that passes all understanding. Then you should trust him when he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Trust the process. Joshua 4, the Bible says, water, while the water was still standing at attention. They took stones and built a memorial for the children and their children. They had a responsibility to testify to their children coming up what God had done for them. So that generation could tell the next generation what God had done. In Joshua 24, 25, there's another memorial there. But this memorial was there for them to show their commitment to God. I want you to know that God has sprinkled some memorials here among us. Lord Joseph is a memorial. I remember some time ago, Lord Joseph had to have a surgery. Some of y'all might don't even remember that. But that just show how good God is. My son, Louis, he's a memorial among us. Because there was a time when neither us or the doctors knew what was ill in him. Bessie Canfield is a memorial among us. God took a liver that he made. He placed it in my sister. And she's here. And she's a memorial. And she gives me hope. To trust the process. <clears throat> Skyway Hill Church of Christ. <clears throat> we are in position to experience God's deliverance. All we have to do is trust the process. Keep praying. <clears throat> Keep trusting. Stay obedient to the Word of God. Keep teaching. Keep preaching sound doctrine. Keep working. And if you find yourselves with your back against the wall, <clears throat> Trust.
Trust the process. <clears throat> Trust God process. You want to be saved? Trust the process. Read God's word. God got a plan of salvation. You must hear the gospel. Believe the gospel. Repent of your sins. Confess Jesus Christ as the Son of God and be baptized. The book of Hebrews 11.6 the Bible says and without faith it's impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists. And trust that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. The lesson is yours. <clears throat> I pray that I said something to encourage somebody somewhere here to understand that God is real. And you can leave here today knowing for sure that you are certainly on God's side. You're on God's family. You're in God's church. You have God's protecting. And God will wrap his loving arms around you. And so will we. If you subject to the invitation, I come while we together stand and sing a song of encouragement.